Hi, I'm going to give you a show and tell. It has one 12 volt battery on the front of the trailer. While we're standing here, it does have a battery disconnect because the LP detector, the TV booster, and the refrigerator are all pulled from the battery 24 7. That's why they give you the battery disconnect. If you don't want them appliances pulling from your battery when you're not using it, you can turn the key to the off position and pull it out. It has a cap that covers the hole. One 20 pound propane cylinder on the front of the trailer is full, except for what we use to service the trailer. Doesn't have electric jack, got a manual jack on the front of it. The other parts that's on here is for your hitch. We're gonna start down this side here. It has the four balance jacks on all four corners. In the front compartment is the rest of the hitch package. Your head, bolts, sway control, bar, and bars. We'll go through that with you when you get here to hook up to your trailer. Show you how it goes on, show you how it comes off. As we're coming back, the first connection is the outside of the furnace. It sucks cold air in the bottom, hot air out the top. I always suggest putting a mud dauber screen over the outside of the outside of the furnace for the simple fact mud daubers like that smell. They go in there, they build their little dirt nest, and it cuts your airflow down. Your next one is the freshwater tank fill. Fills right here, drains where the white cap is there. The white cap's not on the end right now, it is in the hot water heater compartment. It also has a city water connect, so if you don't want to fill that tank, you can hook right to this with a water hose and a regulator. Work right off the water pressure going through the hose. Lug nuts on the trailer's been torqued at 100 foot-pounds. The tires are aired up for pressure, which is 65 pounds on the side of the tire cold. They also have the nitro gas in them instead of having air. But if you're out on the road and one would happen to come empty, you can put air in on top of it. One more thing I forgot to show you, it does have a stove vent. So when you're cooking, you can have a vent to bring the fumes from the inside out. When you travel, you'll want to make sure that that's pushed back down in the holes. It should go in easier. When it travels, it sits there and flaps till it breaks out. This is your power cord for the unit. The blue light indicates that it has 110 power coming into it. The cord's 25 to 30 foot long. The next one back is the outside of the hot water heater. It is a gas only hot water heater, but that is your plug for your fresh water tank. You wanna make sure that you have water coming out the top before you turn it on gas. Also has a drain plug down here in the bottom. It's an inch and a 16th socket, takes that in and out. But it is also called an anode drug. What the anode rod does is draw all the impurities of the water to it, eats up that rod, instead of eating up the inside of the tank. The steel rod in the center, anytime the steel rod shows it's time to replace it, they're usually good for two years or 10,000 gallons of water. On your dump station, your sewer hose goes on just like the cap does. Your three inch valve here in the back is your toilet water. The two inch valve in front of that is your gray water, which is the bathroom sink and shower and the kitchen sink water while we're here it does have the two low water drain points the red line is the side hot side of the water system the blue line is the cold side of the water system you'll use those for winterizing and dewinterizing of the trailer it only has a park cable hookup on the outside so that the park that you're at has cable you can hook right to that and you'll have the park cable on your TV on the inside <coughs> It is prepped for a backup camera up top. While you're dumping your holding sites, you can also hook onto this with a water hose and a regulator. Helps kind of flush out the inside of the black tank only. Your next connection is the outside shower. You got hot and cold running water out here. It's good for cleaning animals or fish. It does have a spare tire that's on the back of the trailer. It's not been torqued on, it's been put on with a wrench, but it is aired up for pressure, which is 65 pounds on the side of the coat. As we come around this side, it does have an outside refrigerator. The outside refrigerator is 110 only. The only time it works is when you have it plugged into the landline for the trailer. The thermostat control for it is in the upper right hand corner. I always try to run it about middle ways. But it has its own individual plug in that it plugs into. A 110 outlet on the outside of the trailer. This 110 outlet is also protected by the GFI outlet in the bathroom. <clears throat> this side over here will be where you have your handle for the balance jacks on the four corners. It is a three-quarter inch nut on the end. 
and there is a place out here for a solar panel that you can buy the solar panel and plug into the trailer that will recharge the battery on the front only. We're going to go to the door, we're going to open it up, steps lift up, pulls out, flips down, we're going to go just inside the door, it does have a working fire extinguisher on the left hand side as we step in. And right above it, there is a Bluetooth speaker that you can Bluetooth to your phone and play the music that you like on your phone right to it. Up here at the top, we're going to check the battery level. shows you it's fully charged. That's not really accurate. You have to have the 110 line unplugged for that to work properly and give you the proper reading on the battery. Your freshwater tank is showing you that it's empty. It'll show one-third, two-thirds full as it fills up. Same way with your black tank and same way with your gray tank. The red buttons down right below it. The first one is for the water pump to turn the water pump on between the faucets and the fresh tank. The second one is the gas side of the hot water heater. When we turn it on, the little red light right above it comes on is the door side ignition. That light will stay on for about a minute's time, then it goes off. Then the hot water heater will go through two lighting processes to light on gas. For any reason it does not light on gas, it'll come right back on. The first switch here turns your LED lights on on your awning. The second one turns the light above the kitchen table on. We'll run that awning out. We're going to close that door just in here. As the awning rolls out, we're not going to be able to get it all the way out because of the trailer park besides, but we're going to get it pretty far out. Then we're going to come out. It does have two pinch points on the awning arm. On the back arm, you're going to pull down against it, which puts the corner of this side of the awning down lower than the front, which will make the rain come off this corner here. It has the same thing on the front arm, so if you want to put the pitch going in front of the door over there, but when you roll it back up, it has to be straight in line with itself to roll back up properly. It does have the LED lights underneath it. They are more pretty at night when it's darker outside. As we start down through the trailer, all the rest of the lights have to be turned on by hand. They all have a little push button in the center of them. And on the light lenses, clockwise puts the lens on, counterclockwise takes the light off. It does have pretty good sized storage cabinets above the table. The top of the table comes off the two pedestals below it. The two pedestals. Uh, Parked sideways underneath the table. The tabletop comes down between the two benches. The two back cushions comes over the top of the table to make a smaller bed. It does have a sliding door between the bathroom and the kitchen. In the bathroom, there is another cabinet space up at the top. The shelf on the top is removable if you wanted to hang clothes in it or if you wanted to put towels up on top of it either way. The light above the toilet has to be turned on by hand, has a little push button does have the GFI outlet in the back that protects all eight outlets in the trailer. The toilet has a single foot flush on the right hand side of it. The directions for the toilet is to push halfway down, fills with water, push all the way down, fills and dumps. does have a two drawer medicine cabinet right above us and it has a little shelf underneath the bathroom sink for more of your chemicals towels and dish rags. It does have a neural knob in the ceiling in the vent that cranks up. A little black button turns the fan on. The fan is to pull the moisture out of the shower area. We're going to turn it off and crank it back down. It does have hot and cold running wire at the bathroom shower. Hot water on the left hand side, cold water on the right hand side. As we step back to the refrigerator. The refrigerator has two settings on it. It has one at the top and one at the bottom. The one at the top says cold or colder. If you turn it to where it says colder, it will not let cold air go down into the bottom. It's to get the freezer chilled down quicker at the top, but when you run it in the normal position, you want to turn it back down to where it says cold. In the bottom of the refrigerator, it has a push button on it from one to five settings for the refrigerator temperature. Usually runs about three, four if you're trying to cool it down quick, and it does have a set button, which is also the off and on button on the refrigerator. It will also diagnose the refrigerator. If you push and hold it, it will go through the lighting process and it will tell you exactly what is wrong with the refrigerator. 
breaker box is the next one down with your 30 amp main being on the left your 20 amp air conditioner and it will tell you from left to right what they are right down below it car fuses on the right hand side are marked right here at the top with the first two or three of them being lights and it goes all the way down through the bottom it will tell you what's going on with the 12 volt if for any reason one of the fuses is blowed it has a red light on the right hand side that lights up indicating that the fuse is blowed while we're sitting down here i'm gonna go ahead and show you the panel right here behind me is the back side of the hot water heater hot water heater has two white valves on the back of it both valves are pointed towards the tank right now when you get ready to winterize all you have to do is turn the valve sideways which makes the antifreeze make a loop at the back of the hot water heater so you don't have to fill the hot water heater with antifreeze in the kitchen drawer cabinets to blow the sink if you remove the panel on the left hand side accesses you into the water pump on the water pump there is one white valve too it already has a pump bypass on it for winterizing you have to turn the valve in line with the hose that goes down into the jug let's get up here i'm going to turn the light on underneath the sink it does have a 110 outlet above the sink also has the thermostat for your furnace all you have to do is kick it from the off position up it will automatically come on in about a minute's time it will go through two lighting processes to light on gas just like the hot water heater on your air conditioner you have hand controls up here at the top there is a red and a blue line on the back one it does not have the heat option strip in it that's an option you can buy later but you turn it to where the blue stripes the biggest and then you have two low speeds for your fan one high speed for your fan, a low cool, and a high cool on it. On your microwave, the only thing I can tell you about the microwave is it's got a clock button. Let's say it's 3.30. <coughs> Hit the clock button again to the two center eyes is flashing. The reason I set the time on the microwave is you can tell if the trailer's lost 110 power coming to it if it doesn't keep the right time. There is a light for the stove top and a fan. For the fan to work properly on the hood range, the vent on the outside has to be opened up, allows the flapper to flap. Glass stove top will fold up two times up off the burners. Little white knob on the right hand side turns it on. When you turn it to the highlight position, it's got an igniter that works. As soon as you let go of the button, the igniter quits. Burners will light. But the light on the right hand side has to be on for that igniter to work on the stove top. Right down below it is your furnace. When it lights, there is a glass eye right here on the grill in the front that you can actually look through and see blue flames burning in. In the top drawer of the kitchen, there is two sets of keys to the trailer. The purple key does the front door lock and deadbolt. The 751 key does your outside compartments and your outside shower. Most important piece of paper in the trailer is the one for the appliances. It tells you who made the appliance, what the appliance is, and the model and serial number. That way you don't have to take the appliances apart to get the model and serial number for in case any reason it would happen to go bad. You don't have to take the appliance apart to find them. It does have a working smoke detector above us here. Place for a TV on this wall here that works with the booster and a 110 plug-in to plug it into. It also has a LP carbon monoxide detector on the side of the cabinet by the stove. You have a fire escape window in the bedroom area. Handle goes all the way through the frame of the window, lets you out right there. You do have a 110 outlet on either side of the bed and a USB port on either side of the bed in the front. On the door side over here, it also has a set of solar panels up on top. That is your digital readout showing you what the solar panels is putting out to the battery. The two cushions comes off the back of the couch. Table or bed folds down to make a bed here in the front. The black plate over there on that side is where the awning wires is. To get to the awning wire connection you have to take the black plate off. There is a little storage up underneath the bed. It is the front storage on the trailer too. It does have a narrow, narrow knob in the living room area that cranks up. A little black button turns the fan on. It wouldn't hurt to put max airs on the vents that way you can leave the vents open if you wanted to. You don't have to run the fans, but you can leave the vents open. That way the air will circulate through the trailer. That's basically everything on the trailer. If you have any kind of questions, I'll try to answer them the best that I can. Thank you.